While poker can be a game with many ups and downs based on luck, it can also lead to long-term grudges and revenge. Things can get heated in stressful situations during a poker match. That is precisely what occurred when a well-known poker professional engaged in a violent altercation with another poker player. The incident was first reported on a prominent Houston Poker Live's Facebook page, where numerous pictures and posts fueled the rumors of the altercation. However, this fight might have been one of the most insane fights in poker history, not because of how violent it was, but because it compelled a poker player into giving up something he dearly loved. The incident occurred at the Legends Poker Room in Houston, Texas. When they bet 800 from 11 to <laughs> that, 8, that is weak. I'll that is right pretty now. weak. Yeah. That's pretty weak. On December 9th, 2021, Isan Sam Farha, a notorious poker player, was spotted at Legends with a dealer named Amjad. Farha was an incredible player, as he was also the runner-up in the 2003 World Series of Poker main event. So, Farha, a three-time WSOP bracelet winner, had a long-running feud with Thomas, also known as Amjad, MJ, or AJ, a former Legends dealer who had worked at Johnny Chan's 88 Social Poker Room, a local poker club that has since closed. Farha is claimed to have fired Thomas from his poker room. However, Thomas was quickly re-employed by another poker establishment in the neighborhood. Following a previous heated verbal altercation with Thomas at 88 Social, Farha allegedly stated that he had issues with Thomas's presence at the Legends Club the day the fight broke out. The two then got into a furious argument which escalated the situation. Thomas smacked Farha on the cheek before slamming him against the wall, shouting, I'm from Detroit, we don't play around. Management and other players interfered to break up the fiery fight, which might have gotten bloody without the interruption. Hope I can call at least. Yeah, I'm calling definitely. How much? Six? Six calls. Farha and Thomas charged at each other, and Thomas appeared to hit Farha in the face. The club told them both to leave immediately. Farha appeared to have called the police after being seen addressing the situation with a uniformed officer in the Legends parking lot the next morning according to Frederick Maxey, who posted the photo on the club's Facebook group. However, while the brawl seems to have affected Farha the most, many people online thought otherwise, because a huge amount of people on Facebook pages and forums believe Farha deserved what he got and strongly support AJ. There are also accusations that during the physical fight, players stood up and shouted for AJ after he hit Farha. Some dealers also commented on the World Series of Poker main event runner-up, stating, He is despised everywhere. He's not liked by dealers anywhere. A GoFundMe campaign was even launched to raise $20,000 to help AJ with any legal bills resulting from the event. The GoFundMe page featured a still from a supposed video of the incident. Our question is, was Sammy always like this? Disliked by the people around him? Or did something change him? Always quick to throw a joke and usually sitting at the table with an unlit cigarette between his lips, Farha was a favorite of poker fans worldwide. Farha originally gained the attention of the poker world in 2003 when he played a pivotal role in Chris Moneymaker's epic story, which sparked the poker boom, and that was where his story began. Chris's final challenge in claiming the main event championship was Sammy, and it was a true David versus Goliath story. Farha had numerous hours of experience and was accustomed to playing under pressure. Moneymaker, on the other hand, was unfamiliar with large events with prize pools in the millions of dollars. Isan Sam Farha was born in Lebanon in 1959. When his native country broke into a civil war in 1975, he and his family fled to the United States. Farha still landed on his feet despite the rough circumstances. He graduated from the University of Kansas with a degree in business administration. During his undergraduate years, he also improved his pool skills and earned money playing the game. Another interesting fact is that Farha was reportedly highly skilled at Pac-Man and even won $5,000 playing this entertaining arcade game. Sammy first learned about poker when he shifted to Houston, Texas in the 1980s. And they know I'm going so aggressive on the table, so they wait for the right hand to go against me. With a competitive spirit running in his blood and a need for new challenges, he swiftly fell in love with the game and realized he could make real money by playing cards. 
So, after a lot of thought, he decided to give it a shot and relocated to Las Vegas, the world's poker metropolis. Sammy's goal was to become a professional poker player, and with his talent and drive, he was well on his way. Back then, learning resources were limited, so those with the strongest desire to succeed, backed up by some innate talent, frequently did well. Farha's Hendon mob and what we know about his career in general indicate that he is mostly interested in cash games. He did win more than $2.8 million in live tournaments, but Sammy followed the money, which was in the side games. This did not prevent Sammy from winning three World Series of Poker bracelets. Farha became well known to a wider poker audience as a result of his repeated appearances on High Stakes Poker. Sammy, who has always dressed in a suit and holding a cigarette in his mouth or between his fingers, played many memorable pots versus Doyle Brunson, Elia Lezra, Jamie Gold, Phil Ivey, Tom Dwan, and others. Fans enjoyed seeing Farha at the tables. He was generally positive and eager to strike up a conversation. He only became depressed on rare occasions, such as after a truly bad loss or an extremely horrible run of cards. Winning or losing, he was always polite and a true gentleman at the tables, which meant that everyone, from producers to players, enjoyed having him there. Although he was frequently up against players who had achieved far more in poker, at least in terms of reported results, you never knew. Sammy fit right in with the audience, and it was clear he felt at ease on the green felt, playing for hundreds of thousands of dollars. Farha was an extraordinary, true old-school poker player, having been playing for a couple of decades before the game became popular. He was very mindful of table manners and was irritated by any attempts that went beyond the boundaries. Our question is, what happened to Sammy Farha after that unfortunate fight? Do you really think he deserved such treatment, or was it just the usual jealousy people possess for anyone who is more successful? Tell us what you think in the comments below, and subscribe to the channel to find out the answer to this question. In recent years, we have seen very little of Sammy Farha. Not only has he not appeared on television, but it appears that he has put poker in general on the back burner. Well, I play a lot of hands, like you said. Mm -hmm. As long as I put a lot of money and I win one hand, I'll get him back so fast. Hendon Mob's last recorded tournament cash dates back to 2014. However, he only competed in a few tournaments in the years prior. Sammy always kept himself to himself and was not interested in being a star. Therefore, there isn't much information about his achievements outside of the felt. However, in 2017, he gave an interview to Poker News, outlining what he had been up to lately and how he spends his time now that he doesn't play as much poker as he used to. Although his days of massive games and huge prizes are behind him, Sammy continues to play poker in Houston, where he presently resides. He still enjoys the game, just not as much as he once did. He explained that he didn't want to deal with the hype around big games anymore. After over 15 years of playing big stakes, he simply became tired and decided it was time to go on. In the same interview, he criticized No Limit Hold'em. While he claims to enjoy the game, he finds it monotonous at times, and his primary reason for playing poker is to have fun. So it's reasonable to infer that he found some nice Omaha games in Texas. Farha's days of playing big time poker appear to be over. Not because he can't afford it or because he's no longer welcome, but simply because he made the decision. We'd love to see him make another appearance on poker television, but we have no idea if that'll actually happen. All we can do is cross our fingers.